In the heart of Chicago during the late 1800s, as the excitement of the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition gripped the city, a dark presence was lurking amidst the dazzling lights and grand architecture. Herman Webster Mudgett, known by the world as H. H. Holmes, was a man of twisted desires and an insatiable hunger for power. Holmes, a charismatic and intelligent man, managed to build an eerie reputation that contrasted sharply with his charming facade. He was a doctor by profession, and while he had the skills and knowledge to heal, his intentions were far from benevolent. It was during this time that Holmes concocted a diabolical plan that would go on to horrify the world. He secured a piece of land close to the fairgrounds and began the construction of what he described as a hotel. But this was no ordinary hotel. Holmes's intentions were as dark and twisted as the hidden passages he was designing. As the hotel began to take shape, a sense of unease settled over those who visited the site. Workers spoke in hushed tones about bizarre requests and strange blueprints that made little sense. Holmes was a meticulous planner, and his creation was a reflection of his twisted imagination. When the building was finally completed, it stood as a three-story monstrosity that held secrets beyond imagination. Its corridors were a labyrinth, leading unsuspecting guests to dead ends and baffling intersections. Staircases led to nowhere, and doors opened into walls. The air itself seemed to carry a chilling whisper, warning those who entered that this place was not what it seemed. Holmes's explanations for the peculiar design only added to the sense of foreboding. He claimed that the maze-like layout was meant to discourage theft and ensure privacy for his guests. But those who ventured inside could feel something more sinister at play a malevolent force that was lurking just beneath the surface. Little did anyone know, this building would soon be infamously known as the Murder Castle. Its innocent facade masked a nightmarish reality, and as the World's Fair attracted visitors from all over the world, Holmes saw an opportunity to indulge his darkest desires. Holmes's Murder Castle was an architectural anomaly harboring a labyrinth of corridors, staircases that led to nowhere, and a macabre collection of secret rooms and chambers. The rooms were equipped with trapdoors, false floors, and soundproof walls designed with one sinister purpose, to trap and eliminate unsuspecting victims. As the fairgoers marveled at the grandeur of the Columbian Exposition, few could have imagined the horrors that lay hidden just a short distance away. Holmes's charisma allowed him to lure his victims into his lair, where they would become ensnared in a web of deceit and malevolence. One of the most chilling features of the murder castle were the gas chambers. Holmes had installed gas lines that he could manipulate, allowing him to fill specific rooms with deadly fumes at will. These rooms were equipped with hidden vents and pipes that delivered the toxic gas, suffocating the victims within. Other rooms held even darker secrets. Some were outfitted with restraints and torture devices, reflecting Holmes' sadistic tendencies. Victims who entered these rooms would find themselves at the mercy of a man who reveled in their suffering. Holmes' insatiable thirst for control and power knew no bounds. Holmes primarily targeted vulnerable women, often exploiting their trust and naivety. He would engage them in conversation, offering them lodging in his hotel, and then manipulate them into isolated chambers where their fates were sealed. The soundproof walls ensured that their cries for help went unanswered, allowing Holmes to carry out his heinous acts undisturbed. As the world around the murder castle buzzed with excitement and wonder, Holmes's creation stood as a chilling testament to the darkness that can reside within the human soul. The very building that was meant to provide comfort and shelter became a chamber of horrors, where innocence was extinguished and evil thrived. H. H. Holmes's motivations were as complex as they were twisted. Behind his charming exterior and facade of normalcy lay a mind consumed by darkness and greed. Holmes's actions were driven by a web of desires that intertwined in the most sinister of ways. Holmes's thirst for power and control was insatiable. His creation of the murder castle with its hidden chambers and secret passageways 
was a manifestation of his need to dominate and manipulate those around him. The lure of trapping his victims in a maze of his own design, where he held all the strings, was intoxicating to him. Financial gain also played a significant role in Holmes's motivations. He was a master of insurance fraud, exploiting the deaths of his victims for his own financial benefit. He would take out insurance policies on his victims and then orchestrate their deaths in a way that appeared accidental. When the insurance payouts came rolling in, Holmes would be the one to profit from the tragedy he had engineered. Holmes's macabre entrepreneurial spirit extended even further. He would sell the organs of his victims to medical schools and laboratories, capitalizing on their deaths in the most grotesque manner imaginable. The depths of his depravity knew no bounds as he found new ways to profit from the suffering he inflicted. His motivations were driven by a cold, calculating mind that saw human life as expendable in the pursuit of his own desires. His charm and intelligence masked a heart that was devoid of empathy or remorse. The more he indulged in his twisted fantasies, the further he spiraled into a world where the line between right and wrong became irreparably blurred. As H. H. Holmes continued his reign of terror within the confines of the murder castle, whispers of his dark activities began to circulate. People who had crossed his path would suddenly vanish, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. The web of deceit he had woven was beginning to unravel, and the world outside was slowly becoming aware of the horrors within. Chicago police launched an investigation into Holmes' activities, but uncovering the truth behind the enigmatic doctor proved to be a daunting task. Holmes had meticulously covered his tracks, leaving behind a confusing web of misinformation and deception. He manipulated records, created false identities, and exploited the chaos of the fairgrounds to evade suspicion. The authorities faced a daunting challenge as they attempted to untangle the labyrinth of lies that Holmes had constructed. Witnesses were hesitant to come forward, and the true scale of his crimes remained shrouded in darkness. But as the investigation deepened, a horrifying picture began to emerge, one that painted Holmes as a sadistic murderer who had built a castle of death. Through a combination of determination, intuition, and a willingness to confront the unthinkable, investigators slowly pieced together the puzzle of Holmes's actions. The stories of those who had encountered him, the accounts of his victims, and the evidence within the murder castle itself began to converge, revealing a chilling truth that sent shockwaves through the city. Holmes's charm and charisma had been no match for the relentless pursuit of justice. As the evidence mounted and his deceptions unraveled, he was cornered by his own lies. The once untouchable master of manipulation found himself facing a reckoning he could not escape. In 1895, H. H. Holmes's reign of terror came crashing down as he was arrested and brought to trial for his heinous crimes. The courtroom became a stage for the horrific tales of the murder castle and the suffering he had inflicted upon his victims. The trial was a sensation capturing the public's imagination with its dark and gruesome details. Holmes, ever the master of manipulation, attempted to twist the narrative in his favor. He used his charm and intellect to cast doubt on the evidence, attempting to sow confusion and disbelief among the jurors. But as the witnesses took the stand and recounted their harrowing experiences, Holmes's facade began to crumble. The stories of those who had managed to escape his clutches, along with the grim discoveries within the murder castle, left little room for doubt. The evidence painted a vivid picture of a man who reveled in the suffering of others, who had crafted a labyrinth of death for his own sadistic pleasure. Despite Holmes's efforts to evade justice, the jury found him guilty of multiple counts of murder and insurance fraud. The verdict was met with a mix of relief and horror, as the world finally saw through the mask of charm and charisma that had shielded the monster within. In 1896, Holmes was sentenced to death by hanging. As the day of his execution approached, the media frenzy surrounding his case reached a fever pitch. The once feared architect of the murder castle now stood alone facing the consequences of his actions. On the day of his execution, 
Holmes maintained a chilling smile as the noose was placed around his neck. His unrepentant demeanor shocked and disturbed those who witnessed the scene. Even in his final moments, he refused to show any remorse or regret for the lives he had taken. As the trapdoor beneath him was released, Holmes' life came to a sudden and fittingly abrupt end. The man who had orchestrated the deaths of so many was gone, leaving behind a legacy of horror and darkness that would haunt the city of Chicago and the world for generations to come. With H.H. H. Holmes' execution, the chapter of his life filled with terror and malevolence came to a close. However, the legacy he left behind continued to cast a long and haunting shadow over the city of Chicago and the world of true crime. The murder castle, once a place of unspeakable horrors, was eventually torn down, erasing the physical evidence of Holmes's atrocities. But the stories of his heinous acts and the chilling design of his creation lived on in infamy. The very thought of the labyrinthine passages, the gas chambers, and the hidden rooms struck fear into the hearts of those who heard them. Holmes's case marked a turning point in how society perceived serial killers and the depths of human depravity. His charisma and intelligence showcased the unsettling reality that evil could hide behind a mask of normalcy. The public was forced to confront the uncomfortable truth that monsters could be anyone, even those who appeared kind and charming. His story also fueled the fascination with true crime that persists to this day. Books, articles, documentaries, and even fictional adaptations have all sought to delve into the mind of H.H. H. Holmes and understand the motivations behind his gruesome actions. The murder castle became a symbol of horror, a reminder that darkness can thrive in the most unexpected places. While the physical remnants of Holmes's reign of terror were erased, his name remains etched in the annals of history. His tale is a cautionary one, reminding us to be vigilant and skeptical even in the face of charm and charisma. It serves as a chilling reminder that evil can wear many masks and that the pursuit of power and greed can lead down a path of unspeakable cruelty.